Project Domo, this project began in September of 2011 when officers identified a crime group that was responsible for distributing cocaine in Toronto. As the investigation progressed, it was determined that individuals from this first group were interacting with groups uh, who had their own dis drug distribution networks. This continued over the ensuing months with a number of search warrants being executed along the way as demonstrated in yesterday's news release. Project DOMO concluded yesterday with the execution of 29 search warrants in Toronto, York, Durham and Waterloo Region. Throughout the project, including yesterday, the major project section of the drug squad received assistance from a variety of units, including all the other subunits of organized crime enforcement and all the other subunits of the drug squad, the Integrated Gun and Gang Task Force, Biker Enforcement Unit, Asset Forfeiture Unit, Forensic, Forensic Identification Services, the Emergency Task Force, TAVIS, Police Dog Services, Court Services, all uh, units in Divisional Policing Command, Canada Border Services Agency and Waterloo Regional Police. And we've also worked closely uh, throughout this uh, investigation with Public Prosecution Service of Canada. Well over 200 officers assisted in yesterday's operation. And I just want to repeat, this is not one single crime group, but rather a number of discrete groups operating their own drug distribution networks who from time to time would work cooperatively. And I know this is of interest. The name of the project was selected because investigators learned that one of the original suspects being investigated had a strong interest in the Domo animated character. So it stuck from that point. Those arrested yesterday have been and will continue to appear in court at 1911 Eglinton Avenue East. I have been advised that there's a publication ban on the pr proceedings at court. You'll have a handout shortly with names and the total amount and variety of drugs, cash and firearms seized throughout this investigation. Uh, we've uh, brought some of uh, what we have seized here today uh, to, uh, as a display, but I can tell you that over 26 kilos of marijuana, another 133 plants, over 17 kilos of cocaine, uh, four and a half kilos of MDMA, 12, over 12 liters of GHB, uh, smaller amounts of ketamine, crystal meth, heroin, hashish, uh, magic mushroom, Percodan, Percocet and Oxy pills were seized throughout this investigation and that's uh, almost two and a half million dollars worth of uh, contraband uh, that was seized. In addition, uh, we seized 13 firearms. Three of them are here to my left, are uh, automatic machine guns effectively. The top one's a rifle and the top, the bottom two are uh, machine pistols and uh, as I said, Mike Press can describe them more fully but I believe one's a Mac 10 and one's a Mac 11. Uh, this investigation began as a result of information from the community and for that we are grateful and ask that the community continue to provide information to the police either directly or through Crime Stoppers. And uh, that's an overview. The uh, news release that Wendy has described will be available to you as well as the uh, list of names of people who've been, including the list of names of people who have been charged and the, uh, the totals of product that we have seen seized in this investigation. Uh, and I think that uh, provides the overview, subject to uh, any questions that you may have. Uh, is that how you would describe the state of drug transactions generally in Toronto these days? A bunch of smaller groups working with each other rather than, you know, a few larger groups taking control of everything? Well, that's not to say that there aren't still some larger groups that, uh, that aren't supplying these smaller groups. In this case, uh, when I say smaller groups, these people were dealing in the kilo level of... Uh, distribution. So it is a significantly high level, uh, a number of significant high level groups that we have interdicted in this uh, investigation. What, can you, what was the purity of the cocaine? So? Uh, we tested at the beginning stages. I don't know, Carl, uh, any. We had uh, some that tested out at 92% pure. So that's very, uh, very high and very near the source. Uh, anybody, I, we don't have a quant or a, we don't have that available today. So this is a real big market. So, of course, was the cocaine remain the main product? That was the focus of our investigation, and uh, as the investigation continued, we discovered that they were also had the ability to uh, to trade in these other commodities as well. But our investigation focused on cocaine. 
and street level drug transactions? Is that how it started and it went from there or where did it start? No, our information because of uh, information from the community identified um, a group that was distributing at the kilo level. And we're seeing multiple, you know, there's American, Mexican, Canadian currency there. Can you speak to what you believe, whether, you know, there's a transnational element to, you know, where these drugs are coming from or going to? Uh, undoubtedly, there's a transnational element to this, and uh, that's why Canada Border Services Agency was part of our investigation. But uh, some of that will be evidentiary um, matters, so no, I won't speak more uh, firmly about that evidence. Suffice to say, yes, there was a transnational aspect to this, yes. If there are no further questions, uh, this information will be available on the website if it's not already. Thank you.